Well, you, yeah, the question is, what are the tools that you can use to measure the value of social media? Uh, yes, there are tools that, like Radiant 6 and others that measure what's going on in the social networks, in Twitter and Facebook and things like that. But, but I think there's a simpler way to do it. If you have your own domain, you know, fredwilson.com, I actually don't own fredwilson.com, but if, if, if you're an author and you have that domain, um, you could use Google Analytics or some other free analytics software and measure the number of people who are visiting that every day number of people who are visiting it every month. <clears throat> and, and I don't think you necessarily need to worry so much about what's going on in the social channels if you can say to the CFO, well, you know, our author Fred Wilson has 250,000 people a month who come to his blog and 8,000 people a day who come to his blog. And when he puts a link on his blog out to XYZ, you know, 3,000 people in the span of 24 hours went there, I think that tells the numbers people what they need to know, which is the, power, the size and the power of the audience. And that's why I think it's so important to own your own domain and to control that and have analytics there. You know, I think that's a great reason to use Tumblr, for example. You know, you go to, go to GoDaddy and you buy FredWilson.com and then you go to Tumblr and two minutes later you got a Tumblr that's operating on on fredwilson.com and so it's an easy way to own your online brand put the analytics there and and drive the audience there and then measure it and and then when you want to sell something or promote something a book tour or whatever you know you've got that captive audience that that can you know deliver for you i wonder if this world of Well, we, we, we had the question about the library. Um, what? Right. So the question is, in the world of liquid content, what's the role of the bookstore and the library? Um, you know, the, the, the library is, is such a valuable institution because it's making books available for free to people who can't afford to buy books. And um, I don't know what the digital world equivalent of that is, but it sure feels like we need that. Um, the, the bookstore, to me, the great value in the book, it, and the librarian, by the way, and, and the great value in the bookstore is the people we all know who work in bookstores who, who can tell you what books to read. Um, and I think that I, I, don't, I don't know that the physical bookstore is going to survive. Um, but I, I sure hope that the role of the library in our society survives in some way to make books available to people who can't afford to buy them. Uh, and I, I hope that the role of the librarian and the bookstore worker who can tell you what to read and what you should be reading and, and you know go into the stack and pull out the book and say, take this home with you, I sure hope that we can figure out a way to replace those. But I just don't know whether we can afford the, the real estate costs of a bookstore anymore in, in the world we're headed to. Libraries are a little different because they're owned by public uh, institutions. Even then, you know, I, I do wonder whether uh, they will survive. So Amazon tried to set a cap at like $10 per book. And what are your thoughts on pricing around? I think things should be priced at, you know, what the market would bear. I, I, I think we have a, I think we have actually a very rudimentary pricing system uh, today for digital goods, uh, largely based on the legacy of the analog world. The book was twenty five dollars, so books twenty five dollars. I know that's not, and I, I know that's not how books are priced, but. But, you know, there was this company, um, is this company, uh, in the music business called Amy Street. Uh, when they first launched, their model was uh, the price of music is going to be based on how in demand it is on this day. And, and the price would change. As, as you know, the band was first coming out, you could buy the song for a penny. 
fan, you know, fan became very popular, maybe the song was five dollars, and then you know, slowly would, would decay. I thought that was an interesting model. Um, it didn't really work. But it seems to me that uh, you know, if, if, if something is in huge demand, then you know, and you could get twenty-five dollars for an ebook, you should get twenty-five dollars for an ebook if if the market thinks it's worth two bucks, then that's what that's what it should be worth. And we don't have the we don't have the market mechanisms in place today to do that, but I think long term that's what, where, we'll, where we will go. And that's why I think, back to your question about you know, who's going to end up in charge at the end of the day, I think it's the content creators and the content owners who are going to, who are going to extract most of the value at the end of the day because I think we will see these mechanisms uh, evolve. How much longer do we have? Um, the, uh, one or two more questions. Okay, a couple more questions. Get an iPad. <laughs> I, I don't know. That was a little bit of an inside joke. Um, I don't know if everybody got it, but Steve Jobs has sort of gone on record that he's going to single-handedly erase, erase pornography from the world. Um, you know, it's it, it it's it's a real issue. You know, my kids have grown up on the internet, and you know, I'm sure they've seen a whole bunch of stuff that I sh they shouldn't have seen, and, and that I certainly didn't see when I was their age. Um, and you know, I think that there should be devices that are internet connected devices that are age appropriate devices that you know, essentially have content filters built into them so that um, that, you know, that, that only age appropriate material would, would be on them. And I, iPad might be a really good example of that. Um, form factor is right for kids and you know it is kind of a uh, a proprietary system. So I, I think that uh, we need stuff like that. And there comes a time, you know, when, when you know, you go from being a kid to being a teenager and then a young adult. At some point, you know, they're gonna, you know, they're gonna get exposed to stuff one way or another. But you know, when they're five, six, seven, eight years old, I think it's a really important issue. Um, 